Um, so my presentation is titled Locating the Absent Self, the Radical Potential of Martin Krim's Attempts on Her Life. Literary narratives are often premised upon the progression of the self, as evident by the Bildungsroman and the Kunstler-Roman. In theater, figurations of subjectivity are usually related to characters or characterization. Through an examination of the subjectivity in the flux of the absent protagonist in British playwright Martin Krim's play, Attempts on Her Life, first published in 1997, this presentation will attempt to examine the manifestations of subjectivity in contemporary theater and its possible political implications. Attempts on Her Life contains elements of postmodernism and comprises of 17 scenarios, not scenes, where multiple attempts are made by undefined persons and groups to describe their perceptions of the missing protagonist and an assumption that different evocations of the linguistic sign and aligns with one or any referent will be incorrect as it would be grounded in understandings of the liberal humanist subject wherein subjectivity is an already present and universally granted status. The spectator is not told directly why Anne is absent, but there are indications through multiple narratives that her suicide and attempt on her own life may be the cause of inquiry into her life. Her reflections are evoked by speakers through photographs, film scripts, videos, recordings on the answering machine, her suicide notes, and personal objects like her ashtray, um, or fragmentary traces that contribute to an attempted reconstruction of her life. These attempts are also attempts on her life, as she does not live in any of these narratives. Only in scenario 16, we see a very young speaker who is possibly Anne, but she is unable to articulate her own narrative and runs away from the stage after her linguistic breakdown. Among the myriad perceptions that Anne is subjected to, she is described as a woman, a car, a terrorist, a prostitute, and a set of late 20th century obsessions with capitalism and commoditization. The various characters who try to define, catalog, or categorize this missing character are not fixed and might not even be individually sufficient or necessary to sustain the narratives. This is not surprising as it indicates a rejection of the subject's essentialist identity. Further, the playwright instructs directors to heighten the sense of irony to the maximum possible extent and indicates that the play is intended for a company of actors whose composition should reflect the composition of the world beyond the theater. Performance and performativity in postmodern theater does not depend solely on minuses, but also includes collage and performance art. Thus, narratives of Anne presented to the spectators are juxtaposed with images of Anne referring to her absence while trying to render her presence. The various scenarios are not only conflicting with and contradicting each other, but they are also unreliable. Anne's mother cannot recognize her in the pictures that she has sent her. In scenario 11, Anne has left the video recordings of her suicide attempts, allegedly as performance art, which is then dissected by art critics. Though she and her life are constantly subjected to multiple cases, the case of the camera, the case of the speakers, as seen in scenario 5, the camera loves you. Her absence allows her to escape the gaze of the spectator. For the spectator, she is just a viewing other who told her parents as a child that she felt like a TV screen, where everything in the front looks real and alive, but round the back there's just dust and a few wires. The spectator's gaze does not penetrate the surface of the, of the screen onto which her image is projected as a commodity meant to be consumed. The question that this presentation attempts to answer is if Anne is an emblem of the multiple disembodied cells engendered due to social media applications, which was anticipated by Krim, or a graver possibility that as per the title, Anne, Anne's life is ontologically dependent on these contradictory attempts to define it. On the face of it, it seems that since the protagonist in Krim's play is absent, one cannot trace or determine subjective agency in the play. These attempts are directed as much at the viewer in order to make the viewer believe in the credibility of each such attempt as of one over the other. These varied attempts point towards the problems and limits of representation. In scenario seven, the new Annie, 
and literally becomes a vehicle, a brand new car. On one hand, the play reduces Anne's identity to a linguistic artifice with no external reality or fixed subject position. And on the other hand, by dramatizing the actor's collapse, the play offers strategies of resistance to the creation of archetypes. Even as she is not present in the play, the character's perceptions of her make her a presence. But since her presence or existence cannot be affirmed, she is both an absence in presence as well as a presence in absence. This is an aporia which renders Anne a specter figure in the play. It would be incorrect to say that the play has no narratives, since one cannot claim that all the 17 scenarios are not, one can claim that all the 17 scenarios are narratives in themselves. They do not give a sense of closure, but are ends in themselves. It is very important to note that by showcasing a variety of perspectives in the attempt to construct or deconstruct Anne, the play reaches its conclusion in affirming the strength of individual perception. The play ends on the note of agreement that a phrase like fresh salmon can also mean previously frozen, thereby highlighting how a variety of perspectives can be used to attempt a description of the same thing, though they might or might not lead to any concrete detail being established. In her book, Rethinking Character in Contemporary British Theatre, Christina Delgado Garcia argues that much like the subject, even character should be seen as a contingent ontological category. She suggests that the so-called character-less plays not only challenge the interpolation and recognition as the only mechanisms by which the subject position may be acquired and acknowledged, but they also evince the resilience of the subject. They should not be mistaken as subject-less plays because subjects are formulated as amalgams of effects, unconscious processes, and economic transactions rather than independent individuals, and they oppose the violence of assigning and being assigned an identity. Rather, she asserts, they should be seen as making a move towards thinking of the subject as capable of emancipation. Althusser's notion of ideological interpolation is critiqued in postmodern theater because of its inability to sufficiently accommodate subordinity. Slavo Zizek has argued that the subject proceeds and exceeds subjectivization since this process of integration always fails, leaving behind a certain residue which cannot be integrated into a symbolic universe. There are three alternate uh, philosophical paradigms to conceive of subjectivity, which may be useful to examine Crimp's play. Two of these have been suggested by Delgado Garcia herself, namely, um, Conceptions of Subjectivity by Judith Butler and Jacques Rancière. Butler's notion of subjectivity um, wherein Butler has argued for the subject's potential to resist and refuse the norms that allow for its very subjectivization, a process of subjugation to norms of intelligibility, but one which discloses the unsustainability of individualism, the possibility for agency, and the basis for the construction of a radical democracy. This radical democracy is not premised on some dogmatic essentialism and of the social, but on the affirmation of the contingency and ambiguity of every essence and is marked by non-violence beginning at the level of human ontology. She suggests that it is in the existence of the norm that we may find the subject's potential for agency. She favors an understanding of the subject defined by her relationality, interdependence, obesity, precariousness, instability, and citational nature. The physical absence of Anne allows her name to be an encryption open to a host of different meanings. For Rossier, subjectivization is not the scene where the subject is addressed, but where the subject makes an address. The subject emerges from action, whereby equality is not asked for, but taken for granted, asserted, and demonstrated. He contends that subjectivization is heterologous as it involves an impossible identification with the other, an identification that cannot be embodied by he or she who utters it. The subject for Rossier emerges from the repudiation of any interpolative call, from the impossibility of identifying with any existing identities, and from active management of a wronging of equality. The subject position is described by Rossier as an in-between, an outsider or a crossing of identities. This subject is an outsider subject because it has no existence in the world as arranged by the police order. In Crimp's play, Anne is an outsider subject because the spectator only has access to her images. Thus, she escapes the police order between the speakers and the spectators by not allowing herself to be viewed at all. Through her commodification as an advert, a card, 
a pornographic actress. She refuses to stake claims to a particular identity. Crimp exposes the perversion of the current androcentric discourses of the case, but abstains from suggesting a so-called better alternative. In other words, Crimp does not make any attempts on her life. This has radical political potential, which I shall try to sum up in the next few slides. According to Rossi's notion of subjectivity, subjectivity is a crossing of identities because anyone who claims or who aims to verify universal equality rather than assert a particular identity can be a part of this subject position, as it is comprised of anyone who actively interrupts the current order. The Rossian subject therefore exceeds the individual. If this subject can be considered a collective or a community, this must be a community of interruptions and fractures. This leads to the question, can the spectator attempt to cultivate any notions of and subjectivity and in which term? And this presentation proposes that the revolutionary potential of the protagonist's subjectivity is due to Anne's truly rhizomatic nature as defined by Deleuze and Guattari. Anne should be seen as a rhizome, a multiplicitous system of assemblages which can be rapidly deterritorialized and re-territorialized. Multiplicities are defined by the outside, by the abstract line, the line of flight or deterritorialization, according to which they change in nature and connect with, with other multiplicities. The conception of Anne's subjectivities may be done by the spectator by amalgamating their own assemblages. Thus, it may be said that Anne's life is not ontologically dependent on multiple attempts to define it as it exceeds his attempts. Rather, by not choosing to violently impose any alternate definitions of the protagonist's subjectivity, Crimp's play is able to articulate an effective political gesture through the category of the character. By signaling the ways in which oppression works at the root of every attempt at essentializing the subject and by expanding the horizons of the ontology of the subject, demonstrating that it is a process in becoming. Thank you.